Resident Evil is a series that has completely blown past me because I overlooked the horror genre back in 2005. Hell, I'd argue that I do still overlook horror to this day. And no, it's not because I'm a wuss or anything. But conversely, yeah, it's because I'm a massive wuss. Not only is 4 rated one of the best of the series, but also one of the best games ever made full stop. And so that's why I thought it would be a good entry to this list. What a pleasant surprise it was to find out that Resi 4 isn't your typical horror game then. What do I mean by that? Is it scary? Sort of. Tense? Incredibly. Goofy? You bet. Resident Evil 4 is borderline ridiculous. And I love it all the more for it. I mean, this is the series known for its dual sandwiches. Everything about Resi 4 is just so over the top that there is no way I could ever have taken it seriously. And that's okay because it never seems to take itself too seriously either. Leon S. Kennedy is literally a B-movie action hero. He oozes charisma, has a boy band haircut, he's a bit of a flirt but plays hard to get, pain doesn't faze him, and he's amusingly athletic, leaping through windows or roundhouse kicking enemies in the face. Leon shoots first, asks questions later. Or breaks into your shack first and then slams your head into the floorboards. Either way, he's the perfect candidate to rescue the president's daughter, Ashley. She has been kidnapped by a Spanish religious cult called Los Illuminados. They hold her hostage and poison her with a parasite in the vain attempt to intimidate the president and to take over the world. Because of course. Leon has to trudge through villages, castles and mysterious islands to rescue Ashley and hopefully find a cure. But it's not going to be easy as the residents are, well, evil. You'll encounter villagers and cult members who can easily outnumber and overpower Leon. You'll fight a magnitude of infected monsters and mutant creatures and you'll banter with an utterly bizarre bunch of campy pantomime villains and suave saviours alike. Enemies get more grotesque, unhinged and difficult as you move forward, where you have to use whatever wits you have as you can't always shoot your way out of danger. And the merchant. I can't not mention the merchant. He's great. Always there, a safe haven, around the next corner waiting to sell me better guns or buy my excess tat for a high price. Because, let's face it, you're going to need as many survival materials and ammo as your attaché case can handle, but you have to be conservative, as there's a finite space. It may be a bit cumbersome to get to grips with, but it allows you a moment's respite when you need to sort out your gear before moving on to the next tussle. It's kind of a minigame in its own right. The puzzles are just the right amount of clever to make me think I'm more clever than I actually am, and the game's now iconic adaptive difficulty makes me feel like I'm more competent than I actually am. I was actually amazed when I could shoot out enemies' knees to slow them down, or shoot a crossbow bolt out of the air. Amongst the high praise though, there are a few moments where this does lapse. It's definitely stuck in that time where menu diving to change weapons and use items was still commonplace. You better love doing escort missions because a good chunk of this game is babysitting Ashley and protecting her from being killed or being carried away. And the camera is a bit awkward and really doesn't help when the Ganados get all tentacly up in your face. But really, that's pretty much where I hold a lot of the criticisms. Sure, the tank controls are archaic by today's standards, Leon can't move or strafe whilst aiming, so you have to plan your attacks on the fly, create some distance before you fire, and always have an escape plan. And that can really ramp up the tension, especially when you're outnumbered and have to keep a close eye on Ashley. Whilst that may seem like a flawed mechanic, it definitely works within the context of a horror game. In fact, a lot of the horror element comes from formulating your attacks under pressure, especially when ammo and health are limited. Only being able to save at typewriters urges you forward, and the sound design can't be ignored either, whether it's a rabid chainsaw coughing into life, the chance of the court members, and the unsettling, exasperated breathing of a regenerator. That regenerator lab section alone freaked me the fudge out. How you can hear them before you can see them, the way they move and how you need to have the right gear to bring them down, lest they turn Leon into breakfast. The tone can and will shift to remind you that it is still a horror game first. Resident Evil 4 was a great game to experience for the first time. I'm fully aware that the series was reasonably well established by 2005, and so I feel like I glossed over some of the surrounding umbrella lore and characters. But that didn't stop it from being as memorable as what it was. I really had to think and hone in on what made it great, as there was just so much I could have rabbited on about. 
Okay, it really does have a weird undulating and somewhat cheesy tone, but being honest, that really was a highlight because both horror and action elements were executed very well, with neither of them overshadowing each other. And that means it's perfect for welcoming wusses, like or unlike myself, to a genre that may be overlooked.